but you could be looking at the entirely wrong credit score. Last week I made a video going over credit scores and more in particular about credit scores. I'm talking about credit scores when it comes to the Credit Karma app. The Credit Karma app does not display the exact credit score you may need for the majority of the loans that you go out and actually apply for. So if you want to personal loan or a car loan or if you're applying for an apartment like this one I'm in right now they're gonna have to pull your credit to see what your credit score is in order to see if you're approved or denied for an apartment or a home as well with that credit score that they see is your FICO credit score not the credit score that Credit Karma offers to you which is your Vantage score so the FICO score is a completely different score I explained all the different versions of the FICO score in that previous video so make sure you check that video out but in today's video we're gonna go over how to see all of your FICO scores because like I said there are different scores depending on what you're taking out a loan to do or possibly applying for and we're gonna go over all those in today's video in the sense of actually seeing what mine are by using the my FICO app in order to use the my FICO app I actually had to sign up and actually pay a fee to see all my different FICO scores so we're gonna do that in today's video and we're also gonna talk about is the FICO app actually worth it because Paying for your credit score doesn't really sound like something you need to do, especially just to see it on a month-to-month -month basis or even a yearly basis. So we're going to do a full review. I'll buy it for you so you don't have to, and I'll give you all the details. Let's get right into it. Let's start the video. Let's go. If you're new around here, my name is Dollar Mike, and I make personal finance content here on YouTube. So that means anything related to your credit scores, your credit, your personal finance, budgeting, your investing, your saving, anything like that, I got you covered right here on Dollar Mike. Take a look at the channel. I got plenty of videos going over plenty of different topics. And if you have any questions relating to personal finance, then just let me know down in the comment section below, and I can make a video talking about just that. Either way, we're going to go ahead and make a FICO account today because I don't have one. So let me go ahead and start my screen recording on for my phone and we're literally just gonna go through the process step by step so I'm going through this for the first time um, for the very first time as you're seeing it so yeah so you're gonna, gonna want to download the my FICO app this is gonna give you the ability to go ahead and view all of your different FICO scores that I mentioned in that previous video like I said definitely check that video out it'll be linked right up there I would have talked about it more in this video but I just don't want this video to be super long so let's get right into it so I got the my FICO app open right here and I explained all the different FICO scores in that previous video. Right now, you can see the free version and the premium version. Looks like right here, the free version covers that FICO 8 score, which is a pretty prominent score in the general basis um, for scores when it comes to your credit score right now. That's the one that the majority of banks and lenders are going to use when it comes to uh, credit card applications or a auto loan or maybe even a personal loan. When it comes to mortgages and other type of loans, then they use a different type of FICO score for that. But the FICO 8 is for that. We're not gonna do the free version today because we wanna see all of our scores, not just our FICO 8 score. We wanna see the two, the four, the five, the nine, the 10, the 10T, all the ones we talked about in that video. So I'm gonna go back over to the premium section. The premium section gives us all three uh, complete bureau coverage, which is the Experian, um, the uh, TransUnion, and the Equifax. So you're gonna get all three of those. And you're also gonna get an update of your credit score, your actual credit score, every single month. Now, do you need an update for that? Probably not. Honestly, you probably need your credit score when you're actually looking to go and get a loan for whatever reason or looking to go and get some type of approval that you may need. So do I need to update every single month? No. So honestly, off rip, you don't need to spend $40 every single month. Maybe just get the plan temporarily and then just cancel it and then just get it again maybe once every, maybe I would say once a year. You're probably good enough with that. But I'm going to go ahead and sign up for it every single month, cancel any time, no refunds, and you can see all the FICO scores. So we're going to click start plan, and I'm going to actually actually make an account because I have not made my FICO account yet. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I'm going to enter my email. I'm probably going to blurb all this stuff out, and we're probably going to skip ahead. But I just want to, I'm really walking you guys from the beginning. Like I said, I've never used uh, anything like this before. So yeah. Uh, and then yes to receive your updates sure cool Hit continue and they're gonna ask for some personal information now this makes perfect sense because they need to verify who I am so I'm gonna have to run through all this information and I'll probably just cut the video back once I'm done they're gonna ask for personal information like you know where I live at 
phone number, and then they'll probably go into some go into some more credit information such as um, who I might have had, had loans with in the past, and then other things. But like I said, I'll just cut back when we finish all four of these things. This might take a little bit of time, so bear with me. A few moments later. All right, y'all, that was way faster than what I personally thought, and I'm sure for you, it was pretty much an instant, right? Okay, great. Either way, I have the FICO app pulled right up. I simply put in my information, I put in my payment method for the, you know, the $40 every single month. Like I said, I'll probably cancel it after a month because I just don't see the value in it. But either way, you don't care about that. Let's see the actual scores. Let's go back on open, uh, go back on open, go back and open the FICO app on up. I have to put in my, uh, password, email and password real quick. Cause I just closed it. I just didn't want it just to pop up instantly. So let me put this in again. Um, uh, probably blur that out. I think that was my password. I hope that's right. Oh, I may. Oh, I can create a pin. Okay, so I'm creating a pin. Oops. You're not gonna see that either. Face ID. Sure, we can run with that. That's great. And there we go. There is my FICO eight score. Now, like I said before, this is the My FICO app, and I can see my FICO eight score across all three different credit bureaus. That's great. On Credit Karma, if you wanna, let's go actually over to Credit Karma real quick just to make a quick comparison to show you that the scores exact are not the same. So right now. My Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian, Equifax 779, TransUnion is 762, and my Experian is 774. And like I said, these are the FICO scores. Credit Karma uses the Vantage scoring system. So on Credit Karma, my scores are probably be a little bit higher, but also not too much, not too much of a gap, but it still matters in the sense of we need to know what exactly our score is if we want to go ahead and get approved for whatever loan that we might need to get approved for or get some type of um, approval in general. Either way, let's go on over to my Credit Karma app, which I don't know where it is, so I'm just going to type it in real quick because I got too many apps, like most people. Face ID, and we're in on Credit Karma. Right now, my credit score on Credit Karma, oh, 801 on Equifax, and it looks like 798 on TransUnion. So this this is brand new for me. It actually just went up. So we're actually over 800 on my Vantage score, which is awesome. But you see right what I'm saying right here, my scores are about 20 points higher on Credit Karma, which is um not bad. It's a it's a valid option, but like I said before, the whole point is this is my Vantage score and not my FICO score. The majority of lenders are always going to pull my FICO score, not these scores right here. So these are not accurate to the T like my FICO is, which is the ones I'm going to need to pull up. So let's go back on, go back on over to the FICO app, open that on up. Um, oh, there we face ID. Um, open that on up, and then we can dive in the app a little bit more. So right now you can see my FICO 8 scores, but let's say I don't need the FICO 8 because, like I said, the FICO 8 is for like auto loans, personal loans, maybe your student loan. Um, stuff like that. Let's say I want to take out a mortgage. Let's look at the mortgage score because that might be different. Mortgage score is the five, four, and two. Still looks pretty good. Seven seventy one. If I want to take out a mortgage, seven seventy one for Equifax, seven sixty six for TransUnion, and seven seventy four for Experian. Still looks great. Definitely in the green. I think the top score is depending on FICO. Let me see. I think the top score is eight fifty. Yep. Um, I think Vantage. I believe the top score is nine hundred. But don't quote me on that. I'll have to double check. Um, and yeah, so not bad. We're looking like what I would say. This is the very good range. Very any, anywhere between very good. Yeah, very good and excellent. I think I need at least a 780 for excellent from what I remember. Something like that. So you can see the gist right here. And I talk about all the differences between all these different numbers in that previous video. This is simply to show off the app. And there you guys go. So that's my mortgages. Let's say for auto loans, this will use that same FICO 8 score as we mentioned before. Those are my auto loan scores right there. So I should be pretty good getting approved for an auto loan. Shouldn't be an issue. Let's check out credit cards. Still should be that FICO 8 score as it is. Credit cards looks really good. This is the bank card score 8. So I'm almost at an 800 when it comes to credit cards for Equifax. So I'll pretty much get approved for, I would say, any credit card no matter what credit bureau they're pulling the information from, which is great. So cannot complain there. And past that, let's look at the new versions. The new version is the FICO 10, which we talked about in that previous video as well. The FICO 9 is not here, but the FICO 9, um, or the FICO 10 includes things from the FICO 9 plus some newly updated things. And my FICO score looks great here as well. 790, 773, and 798 respectively across the three bureaus. So as you can see, it does look different. 
and you can scroll down and see more details about my personal credit these are basic things that you need to know when it comes to your credit score to have a solid credit score such as payment history i have no late payments since i've had any of my credit cards i'm 26 now i have had, i've had a credit card since i was about 20 years old um, I've never had a late payment at all and you do not want a single late payment on your credit because it can make your score drop dramatically as you can see it's a 35% impact to your score even if you have just one so we're good there amount of debt I have about uh, I don't debt I have right now is a little bit of credit card debt obviously that'll be paid off because I pay off my credit cards in full every single month as you should do as well if you're getting a credit card or if you're getting started do not spend any more than you have only make or not only make always pay off your balance in full every single month and you'll be good to go with whatever you get either way this is 30 percent of your score when it comes to your overall debt the only debt i actually have right now is like i said a little bit of credit card debt which will be paid off by the end of the month and also my student loans which hopefully i'll take care of that entire balance by the end of this year or the end of next year depending on how things go how the world plays out if i get bonuses from work all that kind of good stuff past that that and that's also 30 percent of your 30% of your score. Past that, we got the length of the credit history. This is um, something you can't change. This is simply how long I've had all my accounts open on average. So I have about, I think, I don't think it says it here. It says my oldest account is eight years and nine months old. And that's pretty much my student loan. That was like my first time dabbling into credit. That was the first thing, first type of loan I opened up for myself was, excuse me, my student loan for obviously school. Um, past that, I've opened up about 16 or 17 different accounts across credit cards, car loans, and stuff like that. So on average, my credit um, age is four years and three months. So as time goes on, this will improve, and this will also overall just improve my score for the better. And lastly, the last two things, which 10% 10 10 impact to your score is the amount of new credit. I just opened up a new account, which was actually this credit card right here. Um, about a month and a half ago i don't even think it's reported this is the mx platinum credit card i've talked about this credit card is like solid travel credit card definitely watch the video on it um that's pretty much my newest piece of uh credit that i opened so all good stuff there and then also credit mix credit mix is pretty much what types of credit do you have like what types of credit in the sense of you have credit only credit cards do you have only student loans do you have only auto loans the idea is that you would have a good mix of everything and then when you have that good mix of course that'll make your score go up by you simply paying the bill off as you would normally pay the bill off if it's a if it's a auto loan then you're not going to obviously pay your whole car off in one payment you just make the payments as they as the payments that you have to make you just make at least the minimum payment every month you're good to go for a bank card like a credit card you might you definitely want to pay that off in full every single month to make your credit score increase and then for other things like student loans same thing goes make sure you're making at least the minimum payment and then you can make more than that to pay your loan off faster of course and about past all that that's pretty much it. it looks like we got some two red flags in here so i can go and check this out because like i said this is the first time i'm using this app looks pretty cool um so yeah let's see amount of debt is a high impact and that's a red flag and they're talking about my installment balances which is my student loans right now i still owe about 20 six thousand dollars i say or twenty four thousand dollars on my student loans so once that's taken care of that red flag quote unquote will go away and also credit mix i have too many open credit cards i'll live you know what i'm saying i do have 11 different credit cards it's probably overkill i don't need 11 but by all means it's no big deal it's not ruining my score by any means as you can see my credit scores at the top look fine not a big deal to me overall why i continue to open credit cards it depends i like credit cards i like getting the points i like flying for free and stuff like that talk about that in a separate video as well link right up there and that's the gist if we go over here it looks like we have an alert section which it looks like they'll just let me know uh, reports you can see my i guess different reports i'm not going to dive too deep into this because i don't want it to pull up any like personal information but i don't have anything in particular on here it uh, looks like accounts collections i don't have anything collections we talked about that in the previous video inquiries is pretty much when you go and apply for brand new credit so i have two that makes perfect sense because i think i had one when i was trying to go for a house this year but prices are crazy right now and i also had another one when i got this credit card the mx platinum credit card so nothing to review there i didn't see review i can click on that nothing crazy you can see the american express is there um scores nothing nothing out of the ordinary i'm actually and then we got a little simulator at the end so let's check that out let's see uh pay all your bills off on time for 13 months okay so if i do that for 13 months it's saying that if i pay all my bills off on time for 13 months straight it's saying that these are 
the hypothetical of what my FICO 8 credit score will be in about 13 months. And I'll take it. It looks very great to me. Uh, let's push it on up to 24 months, over 800s. Love it. Two years from now, over 800s and everything across FICO, across Vantage. And I don't see why I would drop. Um, I'm going to continue to do what I do, pay off my bills in full, don't take out more than I can chew, and I'll be all good to go. So do I think the FICO app is worth it? Like I said, it's not that deep. I think it's cool to know exactly what your credit scores are, especially when you're trying to apply for certain things like auto loans and mortgages. But past all that, I don't think this is worth having every single month. There's no need to know your credit score every single month. Um, it's nice to know, but there's no need for you to pay for that. I would say maybe get this, see what your credit scores are right now, do what you gotta do, make the changes, write down the changes that you need to make in your in your life and your personal financial life. Make those changes and then get the app again or sign up for a membership again maybe a year from now and see what your credit scores are then. Or if you're just going for a new type of loan that you might need to get, like you're trying to go and get a house or something like that, then by all means, check and see what your credit score is for a house. Right now, I can see what mine's are for a house. Or same thing goes for a car loan. Check and see what your credit score is for a car loan before you go and apply for that car loan. So you know exactly what you're going to get before you even walk in the door. You know what you're going to get approved for or if you're not going to get approved at all because it's possible. Like I said, these scores are not the same thing as Credit Karma and they're not supposed to be because it's a whole different scoring system. So that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think about uh, MyFICO, the MyFICO app. I think it's great. Do you need it? I say maybe just sign up once a year just to see what it is. 40 bucks. I think it's worth it just to see all your credit scores. I think 40 bucks is definitely a steal just to see all your credit scores once a year. And that's literally it. I'm going to cancel this literally today and that'll be about it. Past that, that's all I really got for this video. Let me know if you want to see other credit score like content on the page. And um, anything else I can help you with your credit, just let me know down in the comment section below. I feel like I'm doing pretty well with mine. And if I can help you out to gain a little bit of your boost in your credit score or give you some tips for it, then by all means, I can help you. So just comment down below and let me know. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching as always. I'll see you in the next one. I'm out. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe, stay positive, and stay hydrated. Dollar Mike. Peace.